I want to talk to two fan bases over here. Firstly, I want to talk to the Minnesota faithful, and I also want to talk to the Ottawa Senators fan base as well. There are conversations we can have about this player that transcend both of the fan bases because it's a pretty interesting dichotomy, at least from my perspective over here, to discuss and analyze what these two fan bases are seeing when they look at Kevin Fiala, who is the subject of today's video. So, if you want to talk to the Minnesota fans so far, let's go over Fiala, what he was for the Wild, what he could be, or what he should have been, I guess you could say, and why some Wild fans are kind of ticked off at the way this guy performed in their first round playoff series against the St. Louis Blues. Now, it's not just Fiala, you could say that about many players, but... Kevin Fiala was indeed a guy that had himself a pretty big spotlight shine above his head heading into the 2022 playoffs. Why? Because Kevin Fiala, as a 25-year-old this season, 5'10", 205 pounds, as a left-handed shot, who played primarily on the wing, but whose profile is listed on Elite Prospects as being a all-three position forward, He's making $5.1 million this season, he expires at the end of this year, he'll be an RFA, and he's coming off of a season where he had himself a very whopping 85 points in 82 games played. A huge step up from all the seasons he has had in the past with the Nashville Predators and with the Wild as well. He had 40 points in 50 games played, 20 goals, 20 assists last year, and this season he absolutely took the next step in terms of goal scoring, in terms of playmaking, just all around he was a very, very good offensive talent. I say this story all the time, but every time this guy played off against the Vancouver Canucks, especially in the 2020 bubble play-in series, it was an absolute nightmare because it just seemed like this guy scored a goal every single time. They weren't even pretty goals, too. He'd just be standing there, he'd take the puck, and he'd snipe it up on Demko. Or Jacob Markstrom, I guess, because he was the main guy in that play-in series. Yeah. Scratch that idea. But either way, Kevin Fiala gave me nightmares, because this guy just has a wrist shot that goes in all the time, and it's the reason why he scored 33 goals in 82 games this previous season. However, in the Minnesota Wilds' 4-2 loss at the hands of the St. Louis Blues, that's the series loss, by the way, they lost the individual game 6 with a score of 5-1, and you could really go out there and pinpoint a lot of the players on the Sens for not showing up. The only one that actually did was Kirill Kaprizov, who, due to his God-given abilities, was able to get seven goals on the entire freaking series. So, yeah, good on Kaprizov for doing what he was doing. But aside from Kirill Kaprizov, there was a whole bunch of controversy going around with the other players. Hey, where is Kevin Fiala? The guy scored zero goals. Matt Boldy had one point. You had... Matt Zuccarello, who had a goal, Ryan Hartman didn't score any goals either, and you started to see a lot of the cracks in the Wilds roster show up on the surface against the St. Louis Blues, and then you had the entire goaltending controversy too. Okay, you're playing Fleury this entire time, and then you don't start him in the last game. It's kind of a mess when you take a look at how the Wild handled their postseason this year, but for Kevin Fiala, the thing is, he is still an RFA, and he's still going to need a contract coming off of his over-point-per-game season. The question is, though, is the playoff run enough of a deterrent to say that he deserves less than what he would have been able to get otherwise if you were just judging his contract by his play in the regular season? This is what Bill Guerin said about the certainty of signing Kevin Fiala. There is uncertainty. We'd love to have Kevin back. I don't know if it's going to be possible, though. I'm uncertain. I am. We can do anything, but at what cost? This opens up another can of worms. Hey, you know, the Minnesota Wild went out there and had some contract extensions in the middle of the season, which makes things a little bit difficult for you to finally get Fiala to a contract, considering the fact that an over-point-per-game player as an RFA, who will be 26 for the entire 22-23 season, will likely demand something along the lines of an $8 million, let's say, by eight, seven-year deal? This guy's good, and even though his playoff run was subpar, I do think there still is a case that he could get a significant amount of money on his next contract. Which is why we head over to another team that has entered this conversation too. Where you have Minnesota fans going out there and talking smack about Kevin Fiala, you have some fans across the border a little bit east in Ottawa, Ontario, who are talking about Kevin Fiala as well. Instead, they're talking about him as a potential trade target. Should the Senators trade for Kevin Fiala? What would it take? 
This article was published by Ian Mendez on May 18th, 2022. There's some very good analysis done as to how Kevin Fiala could fit in with the Senators. So if you want a bigger extended look, then hey, link is in the description. Go ahead and read it if you do have The Athletic. But because it's protocol, we're not going to go ahead and screenshot anything from this article because it is paid for material. This is the entire pitch that he has. Kevin Fiala's future in Minnesota is uncertain at best. The Ottawa Senators really need a top six forward in his prime. Is this a perfect fit, or are there too many hurdles to make this a reality? Let's dive in. The reason Fiala's name has been linked to Ottawa is because this is not the first time it's been done. Sean Simpson, earlier in February of this year, said that he was hearing the Sens are interested in Fiala from Minnesota. That would certainly be a great fit in the top six. He turns 26 in July and is on a one-year deal at $5.1 million. RFA this summer with only one year in place until UFA status, you would want a long-term deal in place for this player. Now, the idea of Fiala in Ottawa is interesting. You do have the dynamism and the goal-scoring abilities of guys like Josh Norris and Tim Stutzla, Brady Kachuk, all come to mind as good, potent NHL players. But for Kevin Fiala, he would technically be the quote-unquote best guy on the team should he make his debut in that system. Now, I don't want to dispute the idea that a Brady Kachuk or a Tim Stutzla or a Josh Norris could get significantly better over the offseason and become even stronger players than they had been in 21-22, but for how things stand right now, Kevin Fiala also can get better, and I mean, he had a really good season already, so there definitely is some meat to the bone there. But when it comes to Kevin Fiala, there are a few things that you have to consider for sure. Mendez writes about this in his article, and it pretty much boils down to a few things. Firstly, you have what a trade would look like. Secondly, you have how the Senators could fit Fiala in long term. The Senators have a few signings they're going to have to make. They've got a few million dollars in cap space right now, it's 10 million, and next season they have 23 million, and they have to re-sign the following guys. Josh Norris, Alex Formanton, Matthew Joseph, Eric Bronstrom. Later down the line, you're going to have to sign Jake Sanderson as well, and the conversation really muddies up when it comes to whether or not you're going to be able to afford a Kevin Fiala making $8 million or whatever for the next, let's say, seven or eight years. It's going to be really tight if you wanted to go out there and make this work. And that's the ultimate conclusion that Mendez comes to in his article that, yeah, even though you could possibly make a trade go down... It's just going to be really difficult to keep him on the roster, assuming you want to get everybody else signed at dollar amounts that are appropriate as well. The trade is an interesting conversation, too, because Mendez writes about how the Ottawa Senators have that seventh overall pick, and it's actually a conversation that I'd seen in my chat as well. Hey, the Senators got seven, should they trade it for Fiala? The Minnesota Wild could use another good prospect at the top of this draft, right? Give us Fiala and we'll give you number seven. However, there is a conversation that Mendez has with Michael Russo of the Minnesota version of The Athletic, asking him, hey, would this be an appropriate move, just seventh overall for Kevin Fiala? Michael Russo goes out there and says, it's summed up in the article, but he says, yeah, I don't think that would be enough because the Wild are looking for other things that can help them out, like cheaper roster players and goaltending help. So ultimately, Ian Mendez goes out there and suggests the idea of seventh overall and Philip Gustafson, actually, whom I've seen a lot of Senators fans already say, hey, we should be trading this guy because we have Forsberg, etc., etc. The comparable he brings up is a Sam Reinhardt trade, where Sam Reinhardt, who was an expiring RFA, was traded over to the Florida Panthers for a first-round pick and Devin Levi. That was a pretty good trade, and we documented how successful that move had been for both parties over the past few years. So I do understand that there is a comparable conversation to have here with Kevin Fiala and the seventh overall pick and goaltender Philip Gustafson, who definitely has not been bad for the Ottawa Senators so far. I mean... Sure, a 3-5-5 goals against and an 8-9-2 save percentage is not amazing, but he did have a lot better numbers last season, so we'll just keep that in the back of our minds as well. So, talk to me in the comments what do you think, ultimately, about this entire idea. If the Sens were to send over something like 7th overall, Philip Gustafson, for a Kevin Fiala RFA contract, is that something you would want to do if you are a Wild or a Senators fan? Sens fans, what do you think about the idea of re-signing Fiala, considering all the other contracts you're going to have to get under the books as well? It certainly is not going to be easy, but there is a big conversation going around about it, so I felt like it was appropriate to make this video in the first place. Wild fans, would you be okay with that type of return? Would you like that chance at getting, I don't know, a Matthew Savoy or a Brad Lambert or... 
Who the heck else is going to go 7th overall? I don't really know. A Simo Nemec, I guess? Or do you really want to go with a top tier forward because you could be saying you're lacking some of those? Talk in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye. <laughs>